dust off that Clemson scouting report, give it a little adjustment uh, tweak here and there, and you should be all set for about uh, 10 days from now. Ohio State Buckeyes Live it comes your way every Wednesday, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Got Kevin New next to me from rival Buckeye Grove, Steve Hellwagon, senior Big Ten writer or Big Ten senior writer. I don't know which one it is, but uh, I think they're both just as impressive from 247 Sports Bucknuts and Tony Gertman, Buckeye Scoop. Boys, how are we doing today? Pretty good. Hanging in there. Team I understand it doesn't doing well, doing well, good. There's a there's a team I understand. I keep talking to people and having them let me know that there's a team that does not belong in the playoff, and it's not Notre Dame. I think Alabama belongs. I, mean, I, I don't know why people are so critical of them. I mean, you know, Bama belongs. They had a good year. The the defense looked awful against Florida. They they should have just gotten dumped right out of the thing. Ole Miss too. Ole Miss can't have it. Get them out of there. Clemson they lost a game too. And they lost to a team that lost by 24 points in their conference championship game. It's crazy. Uh, so it's good to know that Ohio State's firmly entrenched. The other ones we could squabble about, I guess. All right, Steve, we'll start with you. Ohio State played six games. So Jimbo Fisher, all up in arms because they played six games. Well, maybe Dabo and Saban could say, well, we played 11. They only played nine. What's the difference? Okay, there's a three-game difference, two-game difference. What what was supposed to be the magic number? Was there some kind of, kind of magic number that I missed? No, I don't think so. And I think it's a much to do about nothing. I think everybody knew when the season started that it was not going to be a perfect scenario. And I think what played out, obviously people are going to blame the Big Ten for starting late. And then there were events that were outside Ohio State's uh, purview and that two schools canceled on them and kind of left them holding the bag. And, and let's be all honesty here. The three games that Ohio State missed, a 20-point win over Maryland and 30-point wins over Michigan and Illinois, weren't going to tell you or show you or prove anything to anybody that they were any different or better than – what they showed in the six games. It's just they would have played three more games and risked injuries in three more games. And there's a push-pull to this. I mean, Clemson played 11 games. They're in a rhythm. They put their guys out there for 11 games and risked injuries, whereas Ohio State only risked injuries for six games. And Ohio State six games were disjointed, uh, one here, then two weeks off, then one there. And 18 of your 22 starters are available one game and 17 of your 22 starters the next game and didn't practice together a whole lot with your whole team and everything. So, look, all those talking points and everything don't mean a hill of beans on January the 1st. It's who shows up, who wants it more and who plays better when Clemson plays Ohio State in the semifinals for a shot at the national championship. And really, that's all water under the bridge at this point. And, um, you know, Ohio State, uh, again, is it were they the fourth best team? or the, Well, actually, they go in as the third seed because the, the committee downrated Notre Dame after their lopsided uh, loss and made them uh, the fourth seed. And they have to play Alabama. I think some of that was intentional to avoid – uh, a third scheduled to Clemson Notre Dame game. Nobody really needed or wanted to see that, but everyone was of the agreement that Notre Dame should be in the playoff. And yet everybody looks at Ohio state as the one that uh, should be the odd one out. Uh, you know, Dabo Sweeney, not happy about it. Certainly Jimbo Fisher, not happy about it. Iowa state, Cincinnati had a beef, whatever. So, you know, whatever people want an 18 playoff. I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, I just think that, um, hey, we knew 2020 season was not going to be perfect. And uh, lo and behold, uh, that's exactly what's happened. Kind of an imperfect uh, finish to an imperfect year. I'd like to let everyone know out there that Steve is usually perfect and completely accurate on everything he says, except one thing here. It's not all water under the bridge because I, I have yet to produce a video in which I got the resumes of Texas A&M, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma right here. And I just have a had the chance to post the videos, so it's not all water under the bridge because I need everyone to watch my videos. Okay. <laughs> Kevin, about the Buckeyes uh, argument in all this. Yeah, um, you know, they 
it, w- it would have been great if Ohio State could have played nine games, you know, eight plus one, but that still wouldn't have been 10 or 11. So there would still be the grousing right now. There would still be the, well, the Big Ten, Big Ten ain't no good. I mean, we've already kind of seen that. David Pollock came out and, you know, I, I agree with some of the stuff he said there, but I don't know if I fully agree with it. Uh, you know, how the Big Ten didn't win a single non-conference game. The Big Ten didn't play a single non-conference game. Big Ten's record this season was 500 because, you know, somebody's got to win and somebody's got to lose. Um, you know, I think the Big Ten certainly uh, didn't do Ohio State a lot of favors on the front end. A lot of people will say that the Big Ten did Ohio State some favors in the end when it uh, allowed Ohio State into the Big Ten championship game. Uh, you know, I'm still waiting to see. Have we ever seen an official release on the 17-day uh, coronavirus policy yet? I mean, it had been much talked about, but I don't know if I've ever seen anything officially official yet at this point. Uh, but, you know, Ohio State did what was asked of it. It won the games that was on its schedule. And, you know, I'm hearing all of this talk about Ohio State not looking so hot against Northwestern or, or whatnot and how bad it looked against Indiana. Well, Ohio State looked really good at 35-7 against Indiana and then fell apart. So when I hear these national talking heads talk about how Justin Fields looked like garbage in that game, that is intellectually false. And then when you look at the Northwestern game and Ohio State was down 20-some players, and granted, some of them were not contributors. Uh, Some of them were not out because of coronavirus. But when you don't have Chris Olave, when you don't have Baron Browning, Uh, You know, to a lesser extent, Drew Chrisman, even though, um, you know, his backup, Zach Hoover, played very well. You know, I think there's some special circumstances there. Um, You know, 6, 10, 20 games isn't really going to matter. It's going to be who brings it on January 1st. And, you know, when it comes down to it, I'm sure we'll have one more show before the – the cha- or before the semifinal game, I don't think this Clemson team is as good as last year's Clemson team. I don't think this Ohio State team is as good as last year's Ohio State team. So it's just going to be who brings it that night. Yeah, I think if Jimbo has a problem, shouldn't he talk to the team in front of him in the rankings? Shouldn't he be like, shouldn't his issue be with Notre Dame instead of Ohio State? Shouldn't he be comparing those two teams? But you know, I'm I'm with Kevin. We've seen. Uh, um, com- complaints when one team doesn't play in a conference championship game that they haven't done enough. So whether Ohio State would have played nine as opposed to somebody else playing 11, that still would have been an, an issue. Or before the season, Dabo said, you know, however many games you play, doesn't matter. You just want the best four teams in there. And now that Ohio State is one of the best four teams, but only having played six games, now he's got an issue with that. And I, I'm not surprised anytime coaches complain about uh, Ohio State or the Big Ten or anything that that they are doing. It's it's trans. I, I guess I guess it's transparent because you can see right through what they're what they're trying to do. And uh, then for Dabo to vote Ohio State eleventh, at least he is being consistent with his view on Ohio. Not knowing much about Ohio State because you know you haven't seen enough of them. And so you've seen more of other teams. So obviously those teams are better. And as we know, the more games you play, the better you are. And there are many more teams with six wins in Ohio State. So those teams all must be better than Ohio State, despite uh, what what the Buckeyes look like this year. And it, it's been interesting to um, see Dabo and then you know, like Kevin Wilson taking a swipe on Twitter about how you know he spent his wedding anniversary scouting the – with the Citadel game because of Clemson's, you know, rigorous schedule and scouting all of the opponents that, that Clemson has played in and just watching the Citadel f- tape. And you can give Ohio State, Maryland, you can give them Michigan, you can give them whatever, and they're still going to do what they did and nothing would have changed. And uh, just, I am, you know, you know, the Ohio State coaches want this game really, really badly because there's been, not a lot of filter going on right now in terms of what coaches say or what players and saying. So uh, it, it will be, um, it will be a big win for the Buckeyes if they can get it. If not, they're going to be uh, even, I think almost angrier than they were last year. I've got three journalists here. I'm no longer one. 
haven't been one for a long time, but I would like to hear one of these coaches get challenged when they make this comment about the games played. And obviously they're talking about Ohio State, none of them. And when I say none, I'm talking Saban, Fisher, and Queenie. Name the name Ohio State, but we know who they're talking about. They're never asked the follow-up question of, put yourself in this position. You played six games. You went undefeated. You won a conference championship. Would you be politicking or would you be you know, making the argument for your team. I, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be exactly the same. <laughs> of course. Naturally. And they could deny that all they want, and we'll never know. Hopefully we'll never know because we'll never have to go through this again. But I think at least people could see through that and say, yeah, Dabo Sweeney, 6-0 and conference champ. Like he's not saying, yeah, we deserve to be in the playoff. So the, the other thing in this is that there are certain teams that Ohio State plays, particularly from the Big Ten West, that they just can't, they can't win in regards to public perception. Northwestern's Northwestern. Northwestern could win 50 games in a row, and there's certain people that are going to have the same perception about Northwestern and how good or bad they are. And so Ohio State, if they go out there and drub Northwestern, let's pick one of your three scores. I think you guys were a little over a million. Yeah. I said 34-17, so I was a little bit more in We range. don't need to bring that stuff up, Mark. Beating As John the, Cooper used to say, now you're too dang negative. You're too dang negative. You know, beating Northwest will never be as good as beating Duke or Vandy. Come on. So, exactly. Northwestern is – they are legitimately one of the best 15 teams in the country. I believe that. And their resume speaks to that. But Ohio State can't win there because if they blow them out, then uh, Northwestern wasn't any good. You should have beat them 52 to 10. If they struggle and have a fight and it becomes the game that it did, then it's what's wrong with you? 